Welcome, everybody. We are going to go over the top five best crypto returns in 2022. Welcome to Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl. We are going to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We'll look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket, and the indicators, and most importantly, answer your questions. Quick disclaimer, this is not investment advice. We're not financial advisors, so just know crypto has a um, 100% risk, all right? It's fun, 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 but it is very risky. All right, we are in week number 51 of 2022. So the top best performing cryptocurrencies in returns in 2022 by Anna Nisenko on December 20th at finbull.com. So you have Tron, Monero, Binance Coin, Ethereum Classic, and the last is Dogecoin. And this is per the State of Network report by the Blockchain Analytics platform on Coin Metrics, published on December 20th. So among the top five performers, Tron measured the best results in May when its returns increased by 33% and in March with 19%. Second, we have Monero's most successful month was July with gains of 41%, followed by March in 31, at 31%. Issued by the crypto trading platform Binance, the BNB coin performed the best in July with an increase in asset returns of 33% as well as 12% in March. In fourth place by the best returns performed performance throughout the year, Ethereum Classic measured a whopping 166% returns in July and 66% in March. Finally, Dogecoin saw returns of 89% in October, its best month followed by March at an 8% increase. Way to go, guys. Is it worth investing in Solana crypto in 2023? This is by a writer called Guest User on Cryptopolitan.com, published on December 20th, 2022. So Solana has gone through a lot of roller coasters in 2022. It's been a tough period. In particular, November saw the value of cryptocurrency fall by 50%. Due to the turmoil surrounding FTX, the well-documented collapse of the exchange hit Solana particularly hard, given the deep ties it had with FTX and founder Sam Bankman-Fried. So it started in 2022 just under $180. And even before FTX issues intensified, it was hovering around the $30 mark. On November the 9th, Sol's price closed at $13.94, down from $24.15. And on November the 8th, as news hit that a potential FTX rescue deal with Binance had fallen through, then on 11, November the 11th, FTX entered bankruptcy. While the price of Solana was since rebounded slightly, it is a long, long way from its all-time high of $260.06, which was reached November of 2021. So does all this mean that Solana is in terminal decline or that it is a good time for savvy crypto investors to jump on board ahead of the 2023 sorry, resurgence? Well, Forecast for Solana in 2023 ranged from around $19 to 35 with some predicting a steep drop to as low as $3. This is why, guys, you need to have your charts. You need to have your charts. It's good to know what I'm about to tell you. The fundamentals are important, but if you are following technicals and indicators, you will not get stuck in the slump because they will say, or, or, red alert, red alert, something is moving, make a change. So if you are swing trading, most likely you're laughing all the way to the bank this year. And if you're not in the United States and if you're in an area where you can short the market, 
you are probably super, super, super excited because if you're walking in Decatur's, you would have known things were going to go down and you would have bet all the way down. All right, so back to Solana fundamentals. So Sol and the Solana network have pretty strong fundamentals. These include the proof of history and proof of stake consensus model, which means it can process 50,000 transactions per second compared to Bitcoin's three. There's also its scalability and the attractiveness of the network for running such popular applications as non-fungible tokens. In November, Solana also announced a pretty wide-ranging partnership with Google. So while 2023 may not see a sharp uptick in Solana's value, it might be a worthwhile longer-term investment. But remember, all trading is risky, and this is not financial advice, all right? But I do wish you guys the best, and Solana is quite exciting, and it's a super low place right now. All right, so let's look at the overall market and the individual Bitcoin and Ethereum market. So right now, we are sitting at $813 billion in all of cryptocurrency market. This particular chart, typically we look at the one week, we're looking at the all time. So I thought this was quite interesting. We are back to 2018 market cap levels. If you can see that little first star, that's around 2018. And the second star is right now. So um, anybody hasn't gotten in yet and they're looking at crypto, I'm noticing some people that have never invested before are quite interested. They're pretty excited because we're back to 2018. So I think that's exciting for acquisitioners, right? Okay, next. This is pretty exciting too. I went on Coin360 and I pulled some numbers and I did a customized time frame. And I said from January 1st, 2022 till now, what are the top 200 gainers? Well, it looks like wrapped Bitcoin, I mean Binance Coin, WBNB, grew 894%. How come I don't see anybody getting exciting about this on the news? Like this is a phenomenal increase. And sure went up 899% in the year. AE went up 924%. RVP went up 840%. KRD went up 214%. And the rest are too small to read, so have at it. You can go to coin360.com and you can um, do your own performance by custom time frame and you can check it out. So I thought that's pretty exciting news. Somebody had a great year. All right, now here's coin360. So it's a heat map and a one month performance in market cap block size. So it's showing for one month, Bitcoin actually went up 1%. Yay, very exciting. And on the bottom, you can see the dominance level. Bitcoin is dominating the all the other coins by 38.62%. So it's good to see the king still has some influence there. The Ethereum is down 0.53% for the month. So these are for my long-term investors. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there. Not many people like to swing trade because it takes some time if you want to do it for a living. All right, then you have Binance Coin went down 8.5, 15%, 8.15%. Ripple went down negative 9%. Cardano is that beautiful dark red too, and that's too small to see. And then you have the stable coins, which is kind of sweet and cute how they're changing to a little light green. Um, they've had a little... Um, They've had a hard time lately, those stable coins have, but they're, they're still standing, so that's pretty exciting. So you have a good block size, uh, meaning market cap for USDT. Looks like it's still the winner, but USDC looks like it's coming around and it's being a good competitor for USDT. And then DAI is not there yet. All right. And then um, Binance Coin is not a stable coin, but it's usually got a pretty good market cap too going for it. So I just want to put that out there so you guys can see the block size and notice that Ripple is still, even though they're still in that court case, they're still got some great dominating market caps. People tend to stay into Ripple. They're not leaving Ripple. So even though they're in court all for all of 22, 
2022. Uh, people are still standing by Ripple's side, so we'll see how that happens. Doge is still, it's amazing to me that that Dogecoin is still standing. How can it be? Um, just and That's one of the things with Doge is, I guess you say, social media influencers. And very wealthy people, if they talk up a coin, people stay in it. All right, let's move on. This is a fun one. These are crypto bubbles. So here's the one-year market performance and market cap bubble size. So Bitcoin went down 66% for the year, and Ethereum went down 70%, and Binance down 53%. But guys, before you think that this is bad, just I want you to know if you're American, yeah, it's not so exciting if you like to hold things long term. The crypto market is not the place to hodl. This is the place to use your technicals. That's why we're here with Crypto Mastery today to show you how to swing trade. And if you're outside of the United States and you can short the market, you're a super happy camper right now because you made a lot of money shorting the market. Cardano down 81%. Hex down 91%. So if someone was living outside of the U.S. and could short the market, they are having a great year. Don't think the negatives are negative. They're positives for somebody else. And the big thing is if you don't take your profit, someone else will. So, um, you know, it's a good thing if you're not an American citizen right now. because You could have made money, all this money on shorting the market. All right. So we're going to review the indicators or look at some charts with the indicators applied to them. But if you want to get some of these indicators too, you just go to CryptoMastery.online. Okay, so here is Bitcoin USD one week performance with Crypto Mastery indicators. So we have the early reversal that has not come in. It's still in the downward direction. The average true range is still in the downward direction. The trend, you know, the trend indicators came on because Bitcoin had it had some resurgence. It went up a little bit. And you could see that it was a choppy upward swing. And ultimately, the red trend line never turned green. So you would know that you wouldn't want to have great expectations that Bitcoin was going to be flying sky high. Because even though the numbers and the bell of the indicator were coming up, the underlying line was red for most of the last um this is a week, so the last few weeks, I would say a few months here, but it is what it is. All right, now the signal line, it was showing green, but, and that could reflect how the trend, the key came in, the bell, the one, the two. I mean, Bitcoin is putting up a fight, but it's just not strong enough to, you, you notice on that signal line, how the green line and the gold line are tight. The movement of Bitcoin up was not strong enough to do a great separation. So when you see that the signal line is green and the gold, but they're really tight, it means it could flip flop at any time. So again, one of those indicators where you shouldn't have a lot of confidence in Bitcoin going up a substantial amount if you're buying low, selling high. Now the trend strength indicator, that one came in, you could see red, 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 that's an arrow saying, hey, the trend strength is showing that it's stronger in the downward direction. And then you had some movement in the like the last uh, 10 weeks. It had some upward and down, and then now it's it's saying up again. So let's kind of got to watch it and let's see if all the indicators sink in. We'll jump into a one day chart and analyze Bitcoin on a one day. And then you can look at a one hour if you if we've got some swing traders. So if you guys are swing traders, can you let me know in the notes? Or could you tell me if you're a long-term holder holdler in the in the message box? Um, we have for volatility index, it is super excitingly low for someone in the acquisition stage. The volatility index shows that if it's overbought or oversold. So it's super oversold and it's at a 4.15. That is a phenomenal volatility index for Bitcoin. And it's meaning like, you know, you're getting it at low, low prices. So um, for people in the acquisition mode, that's a great sign. 4.15 is huge to know you're getting it low, low, low. All right. So now let's jump into Ethereum. Now this is Ethereum with just showing the actual the average true range 
and the also the um, the early reversal. The next chart is going to show you all the indicators, but I want to just explain this one to you. The early reversal indicator is that green arrow that's going up. Now remember, this is a one-week chart, so each one of those candlesticks represents a week. So three weeks ago, the average true range, well, it's the, I'm sorry, the early reversal came in saying, hey, it's going to move up a little bit. So it did. It did the next week. It went up, but it did not reach that second blue line. And what that sec, those blue lines are, those are phenomenal, guys. Those are called Keltner bands, and they're averages, and they're almost like milestones. So when you see those candlesticks underneath that lower, the lowest Keltner band, the lower blue line, it says you should think this. This is what you should be thinking. Okay, the first place that this price is going to go up to when it starts going up, it's going to stop at that first blue line. Then, if there's enough momentum in the market to continue to move up, it's going to go to the second blue line. And if there's still momentum in the market, people have confidence or the emotions are in the right direction for it to move up, it's going to go to the third line. Now, when it doesn't go past those lines, you can see this is a beautiful chart to look at. You can see right where that early reversal red arrow is coming down and the candlesticks are black in the recent time frame. You could see how the, the thickness of that candle hit the second Keltner band. But that little wick, that little, little thin black line, that's the wick. That means that the price didn't stay in that range long enough to develop a thick candle area. This Keltner bands are so good for future predictions because it meaning like it didn't go above the line. It tested that top line and it went it went back down. And that is those are really good if you are a lazy trader or if you don't have a lot of time. If you want to buy something and then immediately put in a sell price, I use this blue Keltner band to put in my sell price don't go to I mean and here's the thing you know I wouldn't have more expectations than the one line that goes next so if you're buying like if you were to buy ethereum below that Keltner band and I'm not a financial advisor so it's not financial advice this is just teaching the technicals okay so if I was to buy in the candlesticks way below that Keltner line I would buy down there and then I would set a sell to sell at that first calendar band. And then that way, it when it does get there, it automatically sells, no matter what I'm doing, eating breakfast, lunch, or dinner, having fun with family or friends, or at a Christmas event. Then, if you're shorting the market, and you think it's gonna go down somewhere, then it's the lower calendar band where it's usually gonna go down to. So it's a good, good, good thing to utilize if for, not like if, but just to just to know like when something is going, where it's going to go next and where it's not. Now, the next part of this indicator that is really essential to know is the average true range here on, and we'll just talk specifically about Ethereum here. It's that red line that kind of boxes and shades the whole section, the whole chart areas, or it's a green shading. What that means is that this fiscal analysis, this quantitative analysis, is saying, look, things are going down. And, and the averages, the numbers, the math is showing it's going down. Now, in order to break out of that downward trajectory, I put the yellow, the I, in, I purposely put this orange line in here. I did this just to make certain this horizontal line went right to that top red average true range line. Because I want you guys to understand that the price of Ethereum needs to go beyond that number to change the average true range to an upward trajectory. So at this point, this is a shorter's heaven. Well, not necess not right now. When when you see the downward arrow, people that are shorting the market, they get excited and they short the market. Americans can't do that. The green arrow showing it's going to go up, that is a good indicator it's going to go up, all right? 
but for it to get up into a momentum place where it's going to go up substantial, we have to get the price to change to to that for that average tree range to click into the green zone. It's got to Ethereum's got to go past one thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars, and this is on a one week chart. You know, so it depends on your time frame and how much time you have to spend on looking at your charts and knowing like all right i'm a, i'm being a, you've got to be obsessed with your charts and you have to be able to be on it and if you're not putting in your sale right after you buy it then you would be considered more of a long-term investor and you're going to want to probably go to a one month chart or something to that effect but i think for me and for my risk assessment and in my expectations i like money and i like to make money so I like the shorter time frames and I love to follow the indicators. Like look, if you look back to Ethereum, I don't do any trading without these indicators, period. In July, you see the entry. That says great, let's get it. And if you look, if you would have held that July purchase, you could see how high it went. That's huge. And during all of those upward swings, you could be taking buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, and taking profit again and again and again. And that's what swing traders do. So they don't get emotional about the market. They don't get emotional, upset about the downswings. Because also people could be living in other countries and they could be shorting the market and they're making money on both sides. Okay, so I think I've deep dived into Ethereum right now. It's exciting to see that early reversal that came in. But we need to look at all of the indicators to see if it's safe, if it's low enough, okay? So I'm going to click the next screen and you're going to see the whole chart. All right. So here we have the trend, the line under the trend is still red. So I don't, I'm not, a, I would not be like buying Ethereum yet. The signal line is tight. When it gets that tight, it can flip at any time. And here's the real kicker. The trend strength indicator is red. That arrow down. That says, hey, look, we're in a downward directory. Trajectory. People shorting the market, they may be excited, okay? The early reversal comes in early. So this is a one week. So when the one week goes through, it could change. And that would be super exciting. We need a little upswing now. Now, volatility index, that's at 11.39. Remember earlier we saw Bitcoin at a four of index of four that is so excitingly low and ethereum is still very very excitingly low at 11. so depending on your risk factor and how much you can how much stamina you have to just buy and hold for a long time um you know volatility index is an exciting indicator to buy with and sell with um there is what's exciting about the volatility index being so low so in the red zone is that you have all of that upper area the wall the ceiling everything to get to for profit place so you have like so you have got the endless opportunity for growth meaning like there's just you're on a floor that's a great way to say it the volatility index is going to show you the floor so bitcoin is at a four that's quite four the four is zero so when luna lost its cookies and when Solana lost its cookies, and we can look at those charts to see them, possibly, that's a super floor volatility index. Okay, that's super, super floor. So at this point, um, both Bitcoin and Ethereum, again, Bitcoin is at a four, Ethereum is at 11 volatility index. Those are close to zero, okay? A hundred is a ceiling, and when you get even close to that, you better take your profit. As I guarantee you, someone's going to take your profit for you if you don't take it. All right. Okay. I hope everybody heard me because somehow um, I think we all get in positive mode thinking, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold. <laughs> and then if you hold, that's when you're going to say, it's like if you hold, it's like you're folding. It's like you're giving up. You got to take profit. Okay. So in the crypto mastery basket is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, 
Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So here is the basket today, and I have it organized in percentage changed. So Link is going up the most right now than Phantom, Harmony, Ethereum, Atom, Solana, Litecoin, Algoland, Bitcoin, and then Cardano. But it's, what's exciting is they are moving up a little bit. So we're going to look at the crypto screener too. So the crypto screener has been filtered for just Coinbase coins. And right now, the trading view technology is saying, and their technical rating is saying, Gemini dollar is strong, which we don't buy those. Those are stable coins, so just leave that out. Um, Ocean protocol, that says strong buy. And Paxos, that's stable. We don't do that. We don't buy that. That's just purchasing your profits. Like it's, it's a stable coin. It's always supposed to be a dollar, so that's not an investment. Um, Cryptex, C-R-Y-P-T-E-X, finance, that one is a buy. So the other ones are just buys, but the strong buys, uh, unfortunately, one is a, a stable, and then you have Ocean Protocol. So that's worth looking into. Check out some fundamentals, see if you agree with them. And the, the volume is pretty good at 230%. All right, so we're going to go use our CryptoMastery.online indicators. And if you want some, you can just subscribe to CryptoMastery.online and you can get them too. And we're going to look at question and answers. So let's pull up. Let's see if you guys had any questions for me. No questions. Come on, Alex, Andrea, Camilla, David, Rachel. So great to have you guys here. We'd love to hear from you. Um, Rachel said she's a swing trader. All right. So Alex and Andrea, Camilla, David, I'd love to know, are you a swing trader or are you a hodler? And if you are a swing trader, how many um, weeks or months do you tend or do you do swing by the hour? That's always good to know. Um, so we want to also welcome all new M3 members, I think he's trying to say Moonstream members, so welcome guys. I would love to know if you guys know how to use the question box and go to webinar. I know GoToWebinar may be new to you guys, so um, let us know if you need a little lesson on GoToWebinar so we can jump in and talk to each other. So Rachel says, and if, uh, if you want to get unmuted, let me know, we could do that too. She says, do the red and green arrows appear automatically? Yes, absolutely. So what we can do is look at the Crypto Mastery basket and we'll kind of see where all of our basket coins, where are they right now, okay? So I'm going to go for a one-day chart. If, if somebody could tell me if you want me to look at the one-day chart or the one week and the difference between them is needs to be you guys have to tune in to your trading time frames, meaning like are you going to trade every day or are you going to trade every week? And what charts you start with, you maybe should stop with, okay? Because it's going to get, if you're a new, and let me know if you're a new trader or if you're highly seasoned. The indicators, we're going to teach you the indicators and how to read them, but if you're a new trader, this is so easy to learn, and it's just better for me to understand who my audience is. So I kind of need to learn more about you. So if you're able to be unmuted, let me know that too. So do the red and arrow. So guys, Rachel said, do the red and green arrows appear automatically? Yes. So what she's asking about, I'm on trading. The way I just did that is I double clicked on the early reversal chart in the average tree range area. I double click that and then it makes just that indicator pop up and I'm just going to expand this. So here is that green arrow and that's the, it's called early reversal. It says, hey, it's going to go up and these right here, I'm just going to label this. These are, oh, sorry. So if you're going to write notes, you got to like click on that text. These are the Keltner band with three blue lines. They are, I'm just going to call average 
points, average price, I'm gonna call it price points. So, one, two, three. So I'll put a little star next to them. So we're all on the same page because this is very, very important. These will save your life. Okay. This is going to basically be your safe place. This is where you are not going to have over accelerated expectations ever as long as you guys just focus on these three bands okay and that's the biggest thing even when you're raising children if you think if they think they're going to go to disneyland you better take them to disneyland or they're not going to like you okay so you don't want to go say oh yeah i have expectations that you know ethereum's going to go up to like fourteen hundred dollars today no it's not okay the correct expectations one should have for today, for Ethereum, is if if the momentum and will look goes anywhere, it's gonna go to this point. And you could see, I believe this candlestick stopped right here. It didn't make it all the way, and the thick candle didn't make it all the way. And sometimes they make it cross, and then they go right back down to this. I mean, this is such a beautiful chart to show these indicators within the counter and how it works like it went up it reached it if someone was so positive and they go okay great like it's gonna keep going well it didn't and it went back down now it went down here so like if you're looking at a candlestick right here and you buy down here what's my expectation expectation well to this point but if you really want to do conservative set a self or conservative maybe this point so let's, you have these little, um, this little bar on the left-hand side is essential when you're working with TradingView. It's just phenomenal. So you can click here and you can come up with your lines. So I'm using the horizontal line. I like the one that goes on the whole chart. So I use this one. If you want just a ray, then you can use this one. So I'm just gonna point this out here. If this is the day that you are looking to get into the market, you had some time on Saturday and you're down here, you're buying at 1,190, then what you could say is, all right, well, I'm gonna buy it down here, but I'm gonna set it to sell at 1,220 below this line maybe because of the fact that it may hit that line, but it may not, you know? But somewhere around this range, you could set your sell. So you go Christmas shopping or Hanukkah or you're celebrating Hanukkah or you have your own celebrations and you're doing your thing and it sells and now you're at a profit and that's it. It's like you buy it and then when you buy it, you need to know what to sell it for. And these are where they're at. Now, if you're a long-term trader and you've, you've got time for it to go up or down, you can go somewhere, you can go maybe in a higher level. The other thing I want you guys to know about this indicator is the color of the candlesticks. This is reflecting the volatility index. So when, and this is, I'm gonna shrink this up so I can find some green. All right, I want you guys to know, because this is a beautiful indicator and I like to make it big all the time. When you see green, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click off of this big indicator and we're gonna put our eyes down on the volatility index. This means that your particular asset, your, like right now Ethereum, was at a ceiling. And you should not have expectations of this staying up this high long. Because watch this. All right, so that green is going to show you, let's go down here, Oh, I gotta make it so small. So, okay. So that's where that green was, guys. Okay. And look at that. Bam. That's the volatility index. Volatility index. <laughs> all right. That is why I love volatility index too. I love all these, but I'm addicted to volatility index and the Kautner bands. Okay. These two are my happy places because check this out. When you're in the green, that's a ceiling, 
okay? And if I didn't, if the volatility index wasn't here, I wouldn't understand, you know, the candlestick color. So I want you to know that Ethereum was black. So I'm telling you this because and the black means it's in this zone. And we call this let the cake bake zone because this is like the zone it can go up or it could go down, but it's 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 working its way to one level. So basically, this is where I buy on the red and I sell on the green. That's the biggest split, the biggest spread. Okay, that's that's the goal is to buy on the red and sell on the green if you are you know only able to buy low, sell high. Okay, so let's go back to this, and I'm being redundant because it's it's essential that you know how to read these. So that's that green candlestick. That's the ceiling. So if I would never buy, depend on, remember, this is a one-day chart. So if I'm a long-term swing trader, if I like to swing, and meaning buy in one month and maybe in six months I'd sell, so, and sometimes I do that. I, I do that because I like to have large profits sometimes. You're going to have smaller percentages of a difference. And you can check that out right here. You can say click here, down here. So that's a 35% difference, okay? But that took 18 days. But if you go long term, like you saw on the slides earlier, the longer you wait, sometimes the longer it goes up or down. But this is a one day chart and it's a great one to learn from. So here's the green, that means you're at a ceiling. So you take profit there. But then the red, so here's the thing. Earlier in, in this time frame, these were black candlesticks. Not my ideal buy candlestick color. I like to buy on the red because then you know it's on the floor. You know it's below a volatility index of 20. And I'll show you this. So here, right here, this thick line right there, that's 20. So you know that that's going into the oversold zone. And I'll shrink this up and we'll look. Oh my gosh, see it does, Ethereum, remember you got the queen here, it doesn't go down that much. So Ethereum here, you were, that was a 2.69, a 2.69. Joe is in the house, Joe, how are you? Hi Susie, how's it going? Good, good, I'm so glad you're here. So everybody, this yeah. is, um, Joe, we have the new Moonstream members on, and this is Joe, the creator of these phenomenal indicators. So. Do you want to tell them why I love the volatility index so much? Or, or do you want to go to you go ahead and tell them a little bit about your indicators? I just think that this one is phenomenal. And I was explaining to them, Joe, how the I'll, I'll make it clean here, it's so big. How the candlesticks and the volatility index they match and how I only buy in the red. So is there anything you want them to know about your buying and selling style? And we have a lot of questions. Um, sure. Well, pretty much what I like to do is, is scale in and scale out of uh, different positioning. And, um, you know, and uh, I like using the uh, the ERI as a way in here to uh, have early positioning. So uh, as soon as I see the ERI, what I look for is that, uh, additional confirmation in the TSI. Um, okay, wait, which yeah, confirms... I have to tell you, I'm so sorry. There's new traders, so they don't know what these mean yet. So can you talk and say like the actual acronym name? Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. we did an yeah. audience check. So Alex is brand new to active trading in general. He's been holding for the most part. And I am new and in taking a lot of information. And Rachel earlier asked about the red and green arrows on the, um, meaning the um, early reversal if they come in, if they come in on their own. And David said he's a hodler and he's a beginner, so they're not used to swing trading. And Rachel said she's new. So these are definitely my type of traders. And I'm very excited that you guys are learning on these indicators because it makes your world so much easier to understand. So, Joe, talk to us like we're five years old. <laughs> okay. Well, what we'll do is, right, is why don't we do just like a brief overview of each 
chart overlay and you know if you could uh hide the other ones okay so, okay like let's okay, go so what you want to do is is, is we yeah, yeah but if you could um let's do this first if you could refresh that to um just to fix the scaling on on the left hand side okay um do i just do this okay well no, well, you, you see on the left hand side where the scaling is? Yeah, if oh, you merge that okay. to the right. Okay. Okay. Right, and then me... what we want to do is is uh, hide the uh, volatility, hide the signal line, hide the TSI, hide the radar. So I'm going to show them what I'm doing. I'm clicking on it and I'm clicking the eyeball. And that will hide it, but it's going to still be there, so I can go back to it and I can click it. Okay, what else do you want me to hide? It, you can hide the uh, TSI and hide the trend and okay. hide the ATR. Okay. okay. And I just wanted to just focus in on just the, a, just the uh, ERI, right? Okay, perfect. So now let's just take a look at that first. Okay, if you can make that chart bigger, there you go. So <clears throat> pretty much this ERI, um, when used, that stands for Early Reversal Indicator. And what that means is, is that when you see the green vertical line, that's an early warning that the market could be possibly changing trend direction. And when you see the red vertical line, that's a, a clue that the market could be reversing that trend direction. So what we use this for is part of our hypothesis in our decision-making process, where is that we look for the ERI, which is the green vertical line, to show when the market could be potentially changing direction. So when we look at the chart here uh, on the 21st, Let's take a look at that one first, Susie. On the left-hand side, you could put another blue arrow right there. Right here? Okay. Yes. Okay. And what we just want to point out is, is uh, I mean, if you can put ERI next to it in text, and, you know, and let's say ERI up. Yeah, up, yeah, up. I'm gonna put up, upswing. There you go. And uh, you know, well, just put that uh, on the bottom, right next to the arrow, to the left, right there. Okay. So, okay, and if you can put another one with the red arrow up at the top exactly the same there you go and basically what we're doing is is we're just uh showing in here um the green vertical which is the swing up and the red vertical which is the swing down and and if you're a new trader um this is a a great way in here to um position yourself or also take profits so there's, there's a couple ways you can use this All right now on the um left hand side right you see how you have that extra text in there on the bottom left oh yeah let yeah, me get that out of there Okay, and then uh, up at the top, if you can give me another arrow and, and make that arrow red and point it towards that, that would, you know, uh, everyone can always go back to this video and uh, watch it in the members area. And, um, you know, if you need to set it up, 
that works. Okay, and I'll make this cut, and you could, I could change this to red too, so it helps them understand. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And yeah, exactly. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to copy this and put it over here with this one too, so that they have. Yeah. Okay. So those are so. so does that and make if you sense? can make those green. Oh, good idea. So in Trading View, you guys, that's one of the things. Like, if you could let me know if you guys need some classes in Trading View, because. I did not start as a stock trader. I started in crypto and Joe has just been so amazingly teaching me trading view. It was really scary when I first started trading. I didn't know how to use trading view. So this is one of those things that if, let us know if, if you need classes in this. Okay. So do you want to talk about the Keltner bands? Those are my favorite though. Yeah. So basically, uh, the market price, when it's when you get the ERI, you thus then look for the market price to swing all the way to the upper end of the counter band. So we look to move from the one lower end. So Susie, on that bar, right? If you could go on the left hand side and get the X. Like uh, this guy, okay. Yeah. And you see on that on the twenty first, uh to the left, to the on the twenty first, the date. Oh, yeah, here. Okay, yeah. Okay. Do you see that bar when we had the ERI right there? Up to yeah. the right? Right there. Okay. If you see that band right there, or no down, uh, right there on the band, right there to the left. There you okay. go. So right, right there, there when she broke yeah. when it broke that bar breaks that lower band on the counter. We thus look for it to move all the way to swing to the upper end of the band. And um, if you put another X, right, at the upper end of the band in December, okay, uh, um, at, right there at the beginning of December. Right here? Up to the left, right there, right on the ERI. Oh, right here, right? Uh, over right to the left. Uh, and just um, right there, right there on the ERI, on the red. On the, on the red? Okay. Yeah, right there. Like, okay, so I wish this line wasn't there because I can't tell if the wick hit that area. Well, actually, right here it went up there to this point. This one definitely had a wick there. Yeah, yeah. So, so just about right there. And basically, I'm just pointing out the so value zone of once you get the ERI, what you're looking for is to take place from that point. So in this case point, uh, once you broke the ERI, um, once we saw the ERI, the market price broke the lower counter band and then it started to move to the upper band, which took about two weeks for it to happen, but it happened. So if we look at how much percentage that is, how much is that? Well, so I took it from down here. It's eighteen point six four percent in eight days. Well, that would be like the whole move. But if we just did the two X's. Okay, so down here, um, fifteen point two four percent in seven days. It's still a nice move. Yeah. Now I would have maybe gotten a little worried with this this early reversal there. Um, like the last hoorah before it swung down. I, I really want to put in, I mean, in five days, if you get out there, it's 4.85%. Yeah, so the ERI today looks like it's shown. So this is a potential clue that maybe this is bottomed out. So now let's see what the other chart overlays are doing. So when we go back, 
uh, not the ATR. Let's not do that right now. Okay, let's go back to the TSI. Okay, and um, this TSI, when we see it moved at the lower end, if you'll notice where the green is, you'll see in there when the two uh, averages cross. And and what this is showing in there is that the cycle could be potentially turning up. Okay, but we don't have it as an official cross. So if you go back to the other show, Susie, well, right? which which what, what you want to do is, pardon? Is this what you wanted to see? Well, yeah, and, and what I wanted to do is put in there. Okay, slide that to the left. And then in the text, put waiting for the green dot. Oh, for the so TSI. Slide it to the left. Yeah, waiting for the TSI green dot. So this is an alert that can be set. And uh, once you set this alert and it triggers, this is the first clue that the market could be potentially changing trend direction. This is one of the most important chart overlays, which is the TSI, which stands for Trend Strength Index. Can I explain to them the math that is involved in this? Like the quantitative yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean look, this thing in here. Is, for Joe? Hey guys, it's Brett. Can I chime in for a second? How's it going? Yeah. Great. Hey everybody. Well, uh, first of all, I want to welcome all of our new members and uh, sorry for the confusion earlier. We have been so busy just putting everything together, recording new videos, and uh, didn't have time to really brief Joe and Susie fully on the name of the new group. They're certainly familiar with active traders. And so uh, anyway, the and um, so sorry for the surprise there, guys, but uh, you're doing a great job. And on the um, trading indicators here, I think what we want to do, probably stay away from the math and quant stuff and kind of focus on the uh, how to use them. And, and I'm happy to I'm happy to chime in and even stay on longer. We usually go for an hour, everybody. So since we have our active trader class tomorrow, which will be more on overall market and a little more in depth and more advanced, uh, today might be good to go through the indicators. And so um, certainly Susie's done a good job on that, but um, I'm happy to stay on and we can dive a little deeper because I realize this is brand new for many of you. And uh, so, yeah, let's kind of stick with the simple stuff. Like, you know, the simplest version of this, and then I'll hand it back to you guys, is when that ERI arrow fires and the TSI turns from red to green down below, that's that's the gold where you really want to focus on. And at least I do. And everyone will have their own way to do this. That's what I look for. And then the other indicators are confirming. So while indexed, it's great when it comes down from below and up above the line like the TSI is. So this is probably confusing for you guys because you haven't seen it. But there's that vol index. And then the signal line that Susie just put on. So these are meant to be used in conjunction as confirming indicators. Uh, at least that's how I usually use them. And so maybe, um, you know, finish your thought there, Joe, if you'd like, or um, if at any point you want me to to drive a little bit, because since you're on the subject of alerts, on my screen, I've got five alerts here that just popped up on triggered alerts. And that's another one of the big benefits of these, everybody, is once you set your alerts, you don't have to watch everything as closely. And when they fire on your screen, meaning they pop up on the screen there, then uh, then you know to go look at them. So during down times and days that are kind of sideways or down, it's a good time to go in and set alerts. And that's a lot of what we uh, we do on Active Trader. But anyway, we wanted to clear up any confusion. And uh, you know, this um, normally we have some of our older Active Trader students in here who are following along. But uh, the reason that you know normally, typically when when you come to these classes, you once you learn the indicators, uh, people usually go off and on on their own and 
don't need to attend every week, except the news is great, et cetera. So since we're mostly brand new here today, uh, I just wanted to give everybody a little context uh, so you can put a frame around the information. And um, so anyway, thanks. I'll give it back to you guys, so, Susie, uh, Joe, and I'll just listen in and then maybe uh, I'll stay on afterwards for anyone that has questions or would like to look at these a little more detail. Fair enough? That right, sounds thanks. great. Thanks. So Rachel said, how do we set alert? So um, Joe, maybe we jump into that since Rachel's got some questions and I'd love everybody else to chime in and ask questions too. So uh, Joe, do you want to, you want to find something that we set an alert for? Well, I'm happy sure, to do that. Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, right, okay. uh, Joe, everyone, J Joe is, is uh, he's the creator of these. He's an advanced trader. And um, so certainly um, th is excellent to walk you through all this and the uh, setting of alerts is fairly basic and um you know we can go through that uh, a little bit more so if you had um certainly we'll answer that question maybe um you can do one or two examples if you want joe or what i love about joe being on these classes though is invariably and even though i've been using these for a year and a half two years now there's always one subtle nuance or gem that he drops that i didn't know before and so because of his depth of knowledge in these markets so since we're coming up on the hour uh you know i would say let's do this joe if you would if you have any other insights or context just overall on the indicators how they came to be why they're so important and then i'll stay on with susie or just myself and we'll go in and do a full kind of 10 minutes on setting alerts because i feel like that's you know your highest and best value is uh is uh as i've said is uh, the nuances and what's the big picture on these because you know that's that's why we're here that's why we're all here everything revolves around these indicators Sure. I, you know, I just like to say in there is is that uh, uh, what makes these indicators work so well is 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 that um, you know uh, they they show in here clues, but to potentially when the market is going to change the cycle, and uh, the market, um, you know, is very elusive. Whereas is that you need to have different type of mathematics to be able to show. Uh, the potential term. So each one of these chart overlays, um, um, I created each one of these, and uh, uh, there's one in particular, the ERI that you know we created here together, and it's taken me years to figure out exactly how to show uh, these change in market cycles when you see um, on the chart. So when you're seeing it change from red to green. Uh, there's a, a science behind that in the mathematics, and these are the best uh, chart overlays that I've uh, acquired uh, throughout my uh, tenure in here being a quantitative engineer. So um, everything has alerts to be set, and once you have the alert set um, at that point, now you just wait and let the market come to you. And, and that's really where we're trying to get to is to the point where once you have the alert set in your portfolio, now uh, everything will alert you directly to your phone uh, when it's time to take action. And then also you can start managing your time into the products that are moving and the products that are not moving, uh, you can kind of stay away from. And that's the whole, uh, where we're, another part we're trying to get to is where is that we're spending our time wisely and focus in on what's moving at the moment and um, and then waiting for the next opportunity by setting the alerts uh, for our next trade. So um, we, and we can go more into that next week, okay? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Joe, on the radar, because I'm gonna actually pull up and go through all of these. Uh, the, the radar, if you wouldn't mind, just that's the, uh, Julie, if you could open up uh, the main, just the main chart, uh, and move the radar up to the main chart. Uh, yeah, just drag it up into the main area there. This, uh, guys, is the what many of you will pay most attention to. It's sort of the overall health of the market, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But, but just a little bit about the uh, radar, Joe, and um, once Susie's, yeah, just move yeah, it up sure. to the main, the main chart. Sure. The price well, just... Yeah, well, what the radar does is what we, us humans, cannot do. The radar shows in there multiple time frames uh, simultaneously on the market. So meaning is is that under on the radar where it says time frame, 
you'll notice in there the different variables, the 3, the 10, 15, and 30. Now, you get this preloaded up from us, and when, um, and when you set this up, you'll be able to tell if you have all the market cycles in your favor. So when you see the radar and you see in here that we have the green, that mean, that's letting you know that the daily and the weekly are in an uptrend, uh, and the 60 minute and the 240 is right now um, in a downtrend. So ideally is is that we look for the radar to be completely green, and then this lets us know that we have all the market cycles in our favor. So, and um, you know we couldn't do this humanly because if we were to do this humanly by eye, we would have to look at four charts at the same time to be able to determine the market cycle versus the radar, which can show us the multiple time frames um, within seconds um, if they are in alignment. Great. Awesome. Well, guys, we're right at an hour. And uh, so if you don't mind, and um, I'm going to just turn it over to me here, and then I'll share my screen. And then uh, we can kind of say some Kind of final, if you guys have other things to do, I know that, uh, uh, Joe, you're busy trading, but uh, in terms of, let's see, can you guys see, that's the we wrong screen. The, yeah, this thing, I've got three monitors here, guys, so it always, uh, I have to be kind of careful which one it's showing here, and it looks like this is the one I want. All right, if you guys can just let me know if you can see that. I think it'd be helpful for you guys to know, Joe and Susie, uh, this is what uh, yeah. students have seen. And essentially, what I'm gonna go over and Susie, you're welcome to stay on and we can go through it or I can do it, but we're gonna go over in detail each one of these just so it's clear. And everybody here that's new, you should have these seven indicators. So the vol index, the ERI, the ATR, the trend indicator, the TSI, radar screener, and the signal line, which we pretty much just covered. And um, and then over on the left here, you guys can see uh, the slide we had for the classes, which, of course, Susie just walked through. Great job on that. And uh, just want to make sure we're on the page, same page. Many of you probably haven't gone through the training yet, and I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable with that, especially before tomorrow's class, because there's a lot to cover there. Uh, so um, with that in mind, I'm going to put this away. But uh, Joe, uh, do you have any final comments here? I think you probably safe for you to hop off. You're welcome to stay on. And it's just I know we try to keep it to an hour, and usually you have other things planned. So you guys let me know. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I, I did have some other things planned, some last-minute Christmas shopping. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, um, but look, <laughs> we'll, uh, um, I'll be back in here next week. Um, uh, you know, and I look forward in here to uh, answering anyone's questions and, and then going a little bit further into things, okay? Perfect. All right, Joe, and you and I need to catch up, so uh, let me know I'm around later. Uh, let's uh, do that, and uh, I'll talk okay. to you soon. Thanks for a uh, great class. And, um, yeah, Susie, do you want do you mind staying on a little bit longer, yeah, or did you I'm have – I'm going to stay on, and I'm going to work in the questions box. But, I, but I'll, I'll be here, too, if you need anything. Perfect. Yeah, I just want to give the, all the new members a little extra, a little extra, get them up to speed. I know how it is when you join a new program and then there's all this new information and you're kind of lost and having to go through videos and things can be uh, a little bit onerous. So with that uh, in mind, why don't we switch gears a little bit? And um, what I'm going to do here at first glance, now my charts, I'm going to clean these up because I didn't plan on hopping on with you guys. We'll get a nice, simple, clean new chart here. But I did want to show you this box, the triggered alerts. So I will go into a little bit of what I'm looking at here. And if any of this doesn't make sense, don't be intimidated. It just takes some repetition, you know, and people do pick it up really quickly. So don't worry. At any rate, this alert box is showing something called the um, on a four hour chart. So I have a split chart here and I'm not going to go into too much detail, by the way. Uh, by the way, I, I like Bollinger Bands, and um, it's similar to the Keltner Band that, that Susie was sharing. So there's there's some nuances on those things that we will get into in Active Trader. But for now, I'm going to turn all this stuff off. And all I wanted to show here is the alerts. So what this means on the ball index here. So I guess it's a good segue into the indicators. So over on the left, we have, let's see, Phantom Coin is the coin. I had an alert here that the four-hour 
uh, I call it volley up, volatility index. Now, usually we're not looking at these. These are a little bit more advanced. But what we have on this chart is the ERI, the arrows. Now there's two versions of those. There is the oscillator and the arrow version. Now, most of you probably want to watch the arrow version. It's cleaner. And what I watch for on these things is the uh, confirmation of both. So just to keep things simple, if you don't remember anything else here we covered, you want to just look for these ERI, the early reversal indicator. Now, this is something we accidentally discovered. We had, um, and I say we, jo Joe has probably 100 indicators he's created. Uh, he's uh, a mad scientist, and I mean that in the best possible way. And we were trying to simplify and pick the best ones. We had one that was a another indicator that at first glance didn't seem to be as um, useful as the TSI here. But we noticed a certain pattern that happened, and then Joe added the Keltner band. So none of that really is important. I'm not going to get into the math of what's going on behind this. Some of you want to know, some of you are a little more advanced and saying, I wouldn't trust a green arrow, red arrow system. Totally get that. Uh, but the, this is the holy grail of indicators because it's so simple and because it actually has, has a lot of quant uh, and other indicators behind the scenes. Now, Joe originally had developed all of his indicators to essentially be two or three in one. That's what's so unique about them. And also, if you are on TradingView and using a free plan, they limit you to only three indicators at a time. So this is also useful if you don't want to upgrade to the higher plans. Now, um, you certainly don't have to. I would recommend as you go and you uh, they make it really easy to upgrade so and uh, with lower prices. But as you need them, generally, it's you'll be able to set more alerts and have more indicators. If you're brand new, don't worry, we're going to cover this in Active Trader and these classes here, which are, are great, especially for beginners. So I definitely recommend uh, coming to this every week. Uh, Susie does a great job on the news, what's happening out there. And then uh, in the you know training side of it here, repetition is the mother of all learning. So you'll start to get it really quickly. So that's why we do these classes. So here you see the red arrow, the early reversal indicator pointing red arrow down. This is a four hour chart. And then down below it, we saw the TSI going red to green. Uh, normally, we're going to stick with the daily charts, weekly and monthly. But I just happen to notice this is an excellent example of how these things work. And I, you can see in the other alerts over on the side, don't need to go through all of them. I just wanted to uh, show you this. So I'm going to open this screen up here just so you guys get to see this a bit better. And let's put a circle around all the times where this was right. I think it's important that you build a... Uh, familiarity and a confidence in using these. So let's see what color it's set to. All right, I've got green. Uh, in terms of the ones that were bullish and that worked out, we have this one here, green arrow. And where did that thing go? Here. Okay, there. And then it confirmed right there. So when we have, doesn't want to let me stay on this. Uh, you know what? Let me do it this way because it'll stay on the circle. And if there's any questions at all, I just put it in the chat and um, we'll get to that. This is this time is for you and we want to make sure that you guys are understanding this. So there, green arrow, red to green, turned up above the 20, went up. Um, now, certainly after a big run up, these are going to be less likely. But here's another one on the four hour. This is why we're getting this little rally, you guys. I said we're going lower and I think we are. We're getting a little bit of a bear market rally here. But the fact that these are lining up. I don't want to have to do this every time now. This confirms this. I think we'll push up a bit, but um, it's getting overbought in here. So let's look at the bearish side, though, because we have some great examples of this here. And I'm going to have to make this red. Let's turn this different color just so you guys can see that. All right. So see red here. Here's a faster way. I'll just copy and paste this thing like that. That's much easier. And then um, oh, until it isn't. I'll move that over here, and then we'll do it this way. Taking some extra steps, so there, and then, okay, why is it not doing it? Well, it's always when you're live that things don't want to cooperate for some reason. All right, that's enough. So, see this red arrow here, confirmed on the TSI, I'll turn the labels on, TSI, Trend Strength Indicator, 
ERI, early reversal indicator. Those are the two that I'm most watching. Red arrow, and this goes from green to red. When they align, very high probability. And so if you're asking, well, why wouldn't this be a buy down here when it went red to green? Because we didn't get the green arrow here. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah, so that's how I like to explain it. And so in terms of this one, red arrow, now what's important here is let's do this. If you didn't know which way things are going and you saw price going up, you might say, hey, this we're going higher. This is when most retail traders and investors buy in. And then what happens is it pulled back and they say, well, why did that happen? The early reversal indicator is called that because it's your first signal. Hey, this is getting topped out and is turning over. So you have seen that. And then this also confirmed and sure enough, it continued lower. See that? So really, um, really powerful. This one's a bit unusual because, and there are some nuances to this. Let's jump ahead a little bit because as you've seen, you have two of these early reversal indicators. Uh, in disregard all these other ones, we've been experimenting with a bunch of things. You're not missing anything. You're you're getting the best ones in here. Some of these are older, <clears throat> more experimental. Okay, so what is here's what's interesting with this, and this is um this is the intermediate version. Okay, so you don't need this right away. This is the early reversal oscillator, and so you'll see these red lines match up, the green lines match up, but there are some the where it technically does fire a little bit earlier i just have those turned off and um if i turned those on we would have had a green arrow here and the cross here and it was sort of a weak push higher we're in a bear market drop because this so this isn't the best example so let's turn that off for a little bit but i just want to answer the question some people have well what about all the other arrows right and um Here's perhaps in the on the longer time frames is when these are the best. So now that we have that out of the way, and uh, I'll just finish that thought with these other signals here. Wasn't there one other one? The signal. Tell you what, we're gonna have a better example on a daily. Let me see if you guys have any questions though. And before I keep rambling on, and um, all right, let's see. I see a question here. I've got to open up this window because it's really small. And they don't, there it is. Okay, sure. And then uh, scroll down a bit. So uh, Rachel has some questions here. Looks like Susie answered some of those. But do the um, do the green and red dots need to be programmed? Uh, no, they don't. And uh, by the green and red dots, let me close this down here. I, I mean you mean these. I assume you mean these, Rachel. These uh. Now, on your version, because it's been a while, yours might show as green dots. I like I like this um, to change those, and I like this kind of a chevron-looking thing, and so you'll find that under this shape. And so if you want to change these to circles or diamonds, for example, you see how that changed there? You can change it to diamonds or whatever shape you like. Uh, totally up to you. I prefer you could do triangles. You know, some people like triangles. That's also what's great about these. And actually, triangles are kind of cool. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll go with triangles for a while. Let's see, triangle down. It's it's a little bit harsh, sort of. I I don't know. I think I prefer the chevron, but you guys can do whatever you like. And in here, it's called label. Uh, I did that wrong. Now, you know, do you want to do the right arrow, right right direction? Pardon me. I'm trying to use my mouth and. Uh, show things at the same time it's kind of a, it's a not advised all right there we go so we're back to this so these will appear automatically so in that sense they are pre-programmed and they work in all time frames so we're on a weekly right now uh, of bitcoin and um so double check that uh, so let's do this here i'm going to go to a daily though and disregard all that stuff we'll look at that tomorrow i don't want to give anyone a brain hernia today it's first day at camp. Don't want to give you guys injured uh, and uh, make you think too hard. No, all of this, it, it comes fast. So I know some people are like, what is all this that's going on here? Let me show you the what um, the reason really love these indicators, and, and I'll jump between a daily and the, um, the weekly. But, yeah, so that's, that's a lot of noise. But in the long term of this, it called this called the top and the bottom in the markets. 
And so let's start with weekly, actually. Apologies, guys. I want to make sure we uh, don't overdo it. But here's here's what I also showed you on the presentation. Is, um, okay, <clears throat> so this is Bitcoin Weekly. Let's go back to just last year. So in 2020, after the uh, COVID crash here, markets tanked. We had not only a bullish ERI here, and then we had this trend strength indicator go red to green. Now, normally you have these bigger arrows, but it doesn't really matter. And that was the, the bottom of the market. That was the bottom. And so we are patiently waiting for the next one of these because that went up a thousand percent. And uh, the this red arrow disregard because it didn't confirm here. This one here kind of did, but but not really. The 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 real benefit is the top two. So we had the bearish ERI here on the weekly. We usually look at several time frames, so that's uh, something we'll show you guys. But here, bearish ERI there, red TSI. Pumped higher. This is that Wyckoff, that uh, uh, that upward thrust after distribution. That's the UTAD uh, Wyckoff pattern, and then boom, arrow there right at the top of the market, right at the top and here on the weekly and the daily. So that's when we were really telling people to get out of these markets back in November. That's where I was saying get out. And here again, we had a little bit of a push higher, but then immediately reversed. So, and then all the way down, all the way down. This was a little more clear on the uh, the daily. So uh, hopefully, I am not confusing you guys. There are some cleaner versions of these charts, but let's take a look at our prior example. And uh, what is the training tomorrow, Rachel asked. Yeah, so what you get in the program, these are the weekly trainings with Susie and Joe, and I'll just jump back over here. So this was the bonus package, the live training classes here, and the indicators. This is where you'll hear news of what's moving, and then this is about indicators and sort of how to use them. And uh, then in terms of the class tomorrow is my active trader class for uh, M3 Moonstream, M3 Crypto. Um, Susie, I, we, cha we changed the name of active trader uh, in the and bundled it with Moonstream and Crypto Mastery, so that's hence the name M3. And M M3 incidentally just means it gives you everything that you need, the, the three pillars, which is software and training, and then uh, you know education side, and then the live classes. And I've been so I've been doing this and teaching investors uh, since 2004, and we taught thousands of investors worldwide in options and forex trading, and uh, we found that was the trifecta to help people really become successful is the education certainly and then the um the live classes so to show you how to implement uh, that and the software so those are the three legs of the stool and really we've added a fourth leg of the stool everybody that's the community so if you'll remember and hopefully you guys have already joined the facebook community i'm skimming through the uh, actual presentation the other day so I'm in here somewhere but the community side is uh, really yeah this thing here so um, now we do have a crypto mastery community too it's not as active so you know certainly yeah, we could give you access to that you guys and we will do that that way you can ask questions anytime on the indicators because uh, Susie's in there all the time and uh, we'll uh, you know we'll see those pick up we're really starting to promote that uh, more but at any rate uh, this is that community so the fourth leg of the stool is that community all right um let's see any questions you guys let's see how many you've got eight people here and i recognize some of these new names and um, so and even some of you that have been coming and are in active trader asked for a class on the indicators so why don't we do that and to make it clear and understandable for you guys i'm going to go back to that one screenshot well incidentally here is that one showing i should have just showed you this uh, this is that eri tsi overlap so do you see how powerful this can be on the weekly basis and one thing we're working on to improve this because we're always improving the indicators and susie i haven't told you this yet uh, to, told you this but all the arrows sort of in between that are false signals I want to tie it to a basically tie it to the e, uh, TSI here. So if an arrow would trigger, but it doesn't confirm here, it won't show. And that way there'd be a lot less noise. And so, but at any rate, it's still that's 
another reason we do the classes where I'll point that out and make sure you guys get it right. 2019. Good. I can tell them how incredible you are. So I, I want you guys to know how amazing Brett is. He's specifically worked with Joe on developing indicators. So Brett's brain gets downloaded into Joe's quantitative analytics, and then they've specifically created indicators. So these indicators are very important to me because Brett, I always say, Joe, I say, Joe, you just automated Brett's brain. <laughs> so. Well, I, I thank you, Susie. Uh, I can't take credit for most of that. I mean, Joe is the original indicator. I, what I did is I noticed the, the specific pattern. A lot of trading is pattern recognition. And you know, some people say technical analysis doesn't work, and that's nonsense because it's a representation of, as Wyckoff calls it, the composite man. And that, of course, includes women as well. It's more of the the common uh, psyche that we all share, our fears, you know, and 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 greed, and it's always that balance. And so, um, to some degree, they're self fulfilling. But a lot of what, uh, and, and you'll find that in these other indicators that everyone uses. The reason these give us an advantage and an edge is because these are really recognizing uh, the movements of the bigger money. So we're looking for and have automated how to follow the footsteps of elephants. It's uh, an analogy my old friend John Najarian uh, used to, to use because uh, he, he back in the day, he um, and I were working on similar software for unusual options activity and um, uh, John is on Fast Money, CNBC, you may know the guy, him and his brother, his brother, old friend. And so the um, point of all that is that we're looking for these and we accidentally found that. If you'd like, and I'll show you the actual pattern that these arrows are triggering from, but Joe is the 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 genius mad scientist who made this all possible. So I can barely spell. Um, I don't even know what the code is written in. I just showed Joe. Here's what I think this we should do. And um, we uh, we brought in uh, Joe. Joe's a busy guy. He yeah. This is, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. We brought in an, a top trading view programmer to to actually develop it, but it was based on Joe's original indicator and some of my ideas. But anyway, thank you, Susie. Appreciate that. And um, uh, let's see, oops, what did I do there? So, but you can see here, I just want people to realize because it's new, this is the foundation of a lot of what we do. And a lot of the other stuff is traditional technical analysis and news and developing your own sense of things. But to be sure, what I am waiting for and Susie, what we're all waiting for in this market now, which we do not have, is this kind of a clear signal and this is the 2020 covid low came down this is a weekly chart and we had the eri the early reversal indicator and then boom on the weekly and we're off to the races so and then a smaller one here in the summer last 2021 june of 2021 this triggered to the week and to the day so in the presentation we talk a lot about why it's so hard to buy low sell high and pick bottoms and we're essentially able to do that now. Now, nothing's 100%, but I think this visual is really a good representation of that because the market top, this nailed it. I mean, and then and then the bearish, this is also part of that Wyckoff pattern here. This is the kind of, uh, you know, the bearer market rally came up and this showed us th these trigger automatically. And these, I didn't pay the place here. So this arrow said, okay, this is uh, bearish ERI and then we turn negative on the TSI. So that was a great signal showing we go lower and we did. So what I'm waiting for to finish that thought is, so we have a little green arrow here, but it's not a strong one. The bigger ones are the stronger ones. While it's while it's okay and it's holding at this, uh, this is the 300 week moving average, until we, until and unless we have a push higher on the trend strength indicator from red to green. And what I've also noticed is with velocity, um, is sometimes it's hard to tell because you know, I keep forgetting this isn't live, um, but we haven't firmly broken up above this. And so when that happens and we get a big red arrow, uh, that's when I'm going to be telling you guys, okay, bottom's in. So going to have another big run up like this? No, it doesn't. That's also why we are teaching you the, bear, uh, the, the market cycles. So right now we are not in the, you know, when we get closer to the halving, 
this is where we'll be looking for these signals. But um, just doing a little bit of review to tie it all together, and hopefully that's okay with you guys. But these are some of the slides here. There's the one I wanted to show that you guys saw. Uh, those of you that were on the webinar the other night. So these are the three cycles here that before the halving. So we had our big rally here in, uh, you know, here right here in 2021. And uh, then we've had our bear market here. We're, we're in the midst of it. And right in here somewhere, you know, we'll start to see that recovery. And this is the, you know, getting ready for the next halving. This is what this year is going to look like, you guys. So 2024 is going to be where we're going to have this another big rally. Now I say we are, if I, I'll just disclaim that, if history is any indicator and it doesn't, you know, we're in a historic recession, et cetera. But my best guess is this is what happens every cycle. So we've had, we've gone through the bull market rally. We've gone, we're going through the bear market. We'll cover this in more detail tomorrow with more specifics. But this is what 2023 is likely to look like. And I think we'll see a nice recovery once we put in a capitulation bottom. I don't think we're there yet. We've got we've got some more downside, I think, guys. But from there, with that signals, we'll see a nice kind of push up. And ultimately, I think it'll come back and retest. So this is where you're really in the right place. We'll know when to get it back in, and then we'll know when to get back out once those signals fire. And certainly what uh, Susie was sharing with you, uh, the the other indicators are great for confirming that. And when they all line up, I mean, you know, I can't, I'd never say 100%. I'd say, I can't say, but I'd say 90 plus percent that I'd, I'd go as high as 95 plus when they all line up. But, uh, you know, in this news uh, driven market, anything can happen. Here's another visual on that cycle, though, just as some review with you guys. Bull market, we had that here this year, uh, last year rather, bear market down. This, now, but here's where why we could have another dump, and I think we will. Uh, this is what happens every cycle. People stabilize it, people think the bottom's in, and then it drops. So right in here, though, is the accumulation zone, and whether we go down to 14K, 12.5, I think 12.5 is likely, 10K, probable, uh, maybe a little bit below that. Some are saying lower than that, unless we have a major collapse, I don't know, but the point is, it doesn't matter. We take the guesswork out of this because uh, of the... Um, indicators will tell us kind of when this buy low sell high happens so um and that training tomorrow at noon eastern looks like i'm behind in the questions i'm sorry guys it's, um no that's it all right well um all right alex asks at the moment i don't have questions absorbing as much as i can going to be implementing what i can this week great i'm excited to be here and learn to trade actively great yeah welcome alex and uh glad to have you and we um you know, we, we love to help and answer questions. And, you know, there's an old saying that you don't understand something until you can explain it to somebody else so they understand it. So in many ways, it helps us sharpen the saw as we go as well. So I uh, won't we'll go through more of the slides here. We'll kind of recover, uh, cover these again tomorrow. But that is what I wanted to show you, your, your two leading indicators, ERITSI. From there, and so that's what I'd recommend you guys learn first. You know, maybe don't worry about the other ones just yet. That being said, uh, let's do this. I'm going to add in the the uh, and again, these are all under all under your invite only scripts. If you haven't loaded your indicators yet, then uh, you'll want to fill out the form which sends your trading view ID, and you find that they keep moving this, but I think yeah. So if you click on your little name icon up here, it'll show you your trading view ID. So that's what you put in the form on the thank you welcome page. And um, you can also find me on TradingView. I've started doing streaming there. Uh, I did one and I'm probably going to do one for you guys today. I was meant to yesterday, but got tied up with some work. Uh, so, but TradingView has streaming um, channels. Now, most of it's going to be uh, a watered down version of the Wednesday class. So don't feel that you need to go there also. Once you submit your trading view ID in 24 hours, uh, unfortunately, it's a manual process. We can't we can't automate it yet. Uh, Joe has to. Uh, Myrene sends Joe the trading view IDs. He'll have to manually go in and turn you on uh, or turn you off, you know, sensibly if you, if you guys are um, move on. But uh, anyway, so what you'll want to do. The point of this is once you give it 24 hours, then just refresh your screen if you don't see these because it has to refresh. 
and you go down to invite only scripts. Okay, so with all that out of the way, uh, here the ERI indicator, that's the arrows version, the ERI oscillator is the one I showed you a minute ago. Now, uh, what, you know, it might be fun, Susie, if we did a class on, you know, on basic trading view. I know there, you know, we had recorded a version of you going through that uh, before, which is in the members area, but might be some people have asked for, uh, you know, that kind of class and just basic setup and overview. So if anyone would like that, just put a mention in the chat and we'll, we'll do that for you guys. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There's things and little little nuances that I used to have to call Joe. I'm like, Joe, what do I do now? What do I do? So I couldn't even imagine trying to to do that on my own. So definitely it would be one where everyone would be unmuted or the person would and we'd literally we could share their screen and make sure that they're applying it perfectly. So it would be an interactive class is what I would prefer to check their charts to make sure that they're right. Yeah, I mean, we could do a Zoom and do it that way. I'm always a little leery of that because some people don't realize their cameras are on and uh, they're off uh, using the restroom or other things. I've, I've seen horror stories. So if you, we could certainly do that and let people, uh, if they feel comfortable, they know how to share their, their screens. Um, and anyways. I can, I can do it on GoToWebinar, but we'll talk later about that. But yeah, yeah we okay. can share screens and GoTo. Okay. Yeah, and uh, after this class, Susie, I'd like to connect with you on a couple things just because I haven't had time to reconnect um well this is new uh look at this guy's this little lightning bolt here looks like a harry potter's forehead i it, it's it's built the news right in so look at that that's neat kathy woods flagship fund limping toward the finish line yeah poor kathy but she's I, I, i'm betting on kathy's gonna be right in the end whether we hit million dollar bitcoin by 2030 i don't know but if we get halfway there uh i think uh everyone would be happy so or let me not get off target here but this does help because you know it's always good to know what's happening in the house uh in the house in the news there's me trying to use my mouth and show the screen again all right so but back to this here this is the i'll turn on the eri you can toggle these things off over on the left here with these arrows and uh, so let me zoom out a bit all right, so here's how the oscillator works, just so you guys understand. You don't need to remember or any of this, just I want you to have confidence that it, it, it works and why. So the arrows and the pattern we recognize or that I recognized here when just staring at this one night. So look at this red arrow here. What I notice is when this middle line on the oscillator gets up and touches the 100% line, and in some cases gets close to it, when it reverses and goes below this 80 line, now if you've been trading for any length of time, these are common levels in other indicators like stochastics, et cetera, and it's just, uh, this is a sort of a modified oscillator. But when it gets from the high region down below 80 within three trading periods, then it'll fire. And that's just, this. it sounds simple enough, but no one's ever done it. And so we had it programmed the midline here when it changes color that's because it's tied to that keltner band that susie was mentioning and you this may be more information than you want to know i'm only going to say it once we don't really spend time on it but just so you can say hey that's pretty cool now i understand so the keltner band here is looks like this is blue area and it's sort of like that bollinger band what's important though the, the midline is red when it's above the Keltner band, the Keltner band acts as a more like a rubber band when it's far away from the midline and outside of the top or bottom line, it tends to get pulled back towards it. Makes sense? Kind of like a magnet. So here, there's a big magnet there. When they get far away, they tend to get pulled back toward the midline and often will go to the extreme down here and then sure enough, got pulled back to the midline here. The point of the uh, ERI is how quickly it sort of does that. So yeah, this, again, don't worry about the details. The midline color has some significance in the middle of that, but you don't need to remember any of it. And I usually have this thing turned off. Okay, so you can turn the uh, Keltner band on and off right there. I like it simple. I like a big arrow saying high or lower and then confirming it down below. So um, that that's how it works. And these oscillators, the markets always oscillate. And so... That's why, um, that's how that was created. <clears throat> All right. 
good. Let's get that out of the way. I just want to be thorough. So um, what I will do here, just ignore all this. I just want to show you guys and have the list in front of us. Okay, here. So <clears throat> we um, we're going a little bit out of order. We jumped. We did the ERI first. I don't know why we put them in this order. I think this is the order they happen to be in Trading View. So so we did ERI. I'm going to do TSI a little. Uh, well, we covered that for the most part. So I guess um, uh, we could do the vol index. Let's do that. The vol index is, uh, I don't usually use it on a daily basis. It's more on the shorter time frames. Um, but as Susie pointed out, that because uh, it doesn't normally go that low. But when it does, it's a high probability, similar to the other one, the TSI, similar to that it tends to get pulled back toward the median. And um, you know, if we zoom way out, it's been very rare and infrequent that it's been down this low. The last time was back in April of, of 19, and that was right before, that was the COVID crash when it just started rocketing higher. Happened again here, March of 2020. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah, back in, two, this is the bear market. Let me zoom out a little bit here so I'm not misspeaking. This was the 2018-19 bear market. When it started to come up out of there, nice recovery, got up here, sort of to roll over, and then we had that other pullback that we just looked at on the other time frame. And then, then we got to the COVID crash and uh, then this giant run up. So, and then similarly at the top, you see this confluence again, red red arrow, I'm going to hide the oscillator version for now. Okay, guys, just want you to focus on this. And when we had it confirmed with that vol index going green down to red, down to gray. So zooming in here, this uh, when it comes down and goes from one color to gray, that's a confirming indicator that it's going to go down to the other extreme. So, you know, looking at this chart, it's, and when you know what to watch for, uh, it uh, at least for longer term swing traders, it makes it a lot more meaningful, doesn't it? So for the shorter term swing traders, still a little tricky, but but these but these still are what we're watching for. So where are we now? Um, and I know you know, Susie, you mentioned earlier when this is down this low, you know, while it's true it is fire sale prices, uh, I tend to would would add to that that at levels where you think it will go. You, everyone has their own thesis. Dollar cost averaging is a good strategy soon. Um, I would suggest, and I could, I reserve the right to be wrong, guys, but I feel strongly that we are going to go lower. We, should, we could have a little push up here. I think that's probably likely. Yesterday looked pretty bleak, but right in this range, and I'm, my little squiggles here tend to be sort of pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, let's see, where am I going here? Possibly 10,000, but we could push up a little bit and head down. But I think 14,000, 12, 5, 10,000 is certainly in the realm of probability possibility and probability what so what i would be watching for as a confirming indicator we'll be watching for a green eri in the weekly and daily and uh the tsi as well but but i'm going to be you know as susie's point when this thing starts coming up above here the ball index is amazing that's great on shorter time frames shorter in one hour four hour especially because it'll it'll have more oscillations. So we want to be watching for this. And those alerts that I showed you at the beginning were exactly what I am showing you here. To set alerts on these, you left click on it so these little circles come up, then you right click on it and you go to uh, add alert. And um, there's other ways to do it. I, there's a shortcut Alt A. Uh, so we can do it that way. So you want to highlight the indicator and then Alt A on a PC anyway. So what, what we're, how I'm going to set this is when it crosses up, I, I'm sorry, I butterfingered that. I'll try that again. Crosses up and um, oh, I think I may have done something wrong. Let me, let me just double check that so I do it right. Add alert on the vol index. Yeah, I did the wrong thing there. So while well, the condition, yeah, I don't want an alert on Bitcoin prices. I want it on the vol index. Uh, and um, I need to check with Joe because he's added these seeing things here, and I'm not sure if it does the same thing, but I like to say crossing up 20. And what that means is, 
uh, and here I'll just describe it. So it says crypto bulls. I'm going to change that to, well, I usually abbreviate it to volley up, but I could say volley, vol sorry, volatile index. Well, I'm having a hard time typing and uh, speaking and multitasking here today. Vol index. Okay. Um, above 20 weekly buy. And that's just not you know that's a potential buy not telling anyone to do that or but anyway so when that triggers like it did back here uh, that'll be a confirming indicator okay so that's good and then that's one we certainly will keep an eye on and then there's also the let the next one in the list here and similarly by the way when it goes the opposite down you could set alerts when we start pushing up here and we get this a bear market rally you know the the upside scenario maybe something like this you know um right around in here is where i'll be watching for this kind of a signal you know that will be where to take profits now when we say take profits by the way uh, and susie mentioned it before i think the nuance there is it's always a good idea to take some profits uh, i don't recommend that you sell everything and go all in and go all out go all out that's very difficult and invariably when you sell everything it's going to keep going higher that's just the nature of trading so ge generally either leg out in thirds or halves so um you know that would be up to you but at least that way if it continues going higher you stay in profits so let's say we push up higher a bit here and you sold maybe half of your position and it kept going higher well you're still happy because you made money still and then you can always buy back down in this range again these oscillations but um you know and certainly uh that way if you sold half and it goes lower you have at least half of your capital to buy lower dollar cost averaging so at any rate just a nuance on that so let's see i want to kind of move quickly on all these for you guys uh, i know everyone's busy so that's the um volatility index the dynamic atr is uh, another one i'll just hide this here and get rid of my um drawings there i guess i can leave those on the uh so we'll turn off the eri any questions on those guys pretty simple right you'll get it and so i mean you'll you'll see i don't do a lot of fibonacci stuff uh we do at certain times i did some this morning and um i guess i should just uh bring that up here to finish that thought what do we have here Hang on, guys. Uh, you guys saw that. Where's the uh, group here? And team. Here. Okay. So this is from earlier today. This uh, image. Um, so the basically, this is a Fibonacci here. And we had, we bounced, came right down to that golden pocket. Uh, if you guys want to see me draw that, we'll do it tomorrow. So uh, attend that class. You know, we're oversold on the stochastics. So we could get a bit of a bounce. I still use some of these mainstream indicators. But um that would coincide with, you know, this kind of thing, push up and then we go lower. So with that, uh, let's see the ATR. I wonder if I want to go back to, this is a, I'll do a one hour, four hour and clean this up a little bit. The ATR, they work in all time frames, And um, so let's add that to this chart here, average true range. And it's called the dynamic ATR. And you know what I'll do, just so you guys are clear on that, is I'll take a screenshot of this. This is your cheat sheet here of what indicators you have, and um, uh, plus the radar. The radar was a bonus later, so we'll cover that in a little bit. All right, I'll drop that uh, image in the. Uh, the chat, the M3 Active Trader chat. Okay, so we have average true range here. Now, basically, what this is, and I'll just use, uh, I'll put it on, on, uh, I'll put it on the four hour too. I think that might be useful. I usually use this as a confirming indicator, not a, a primary one. But it, um, again, when these all start to align, it really can improve your uh, confidence, if nothing else. Is that right? So, and so basically, this. Um, Essentially, it'll say entry exit. These are kind of a representation of the the average range. And when it starts to break back above, you saw back here it was an excellent call on Phantom on a four hour. And so we did not get the uh, ERI on that. Let's see, did we? We did have a TSI. So and the vol index. 
So while I look for the ERI first, it doesn't always happen. But when these other ones start to confirm, you have the entry here, early signal is here on the TSI and the vol index. Now you might be saying, well, I don't think, not a, very few people have made this assumption, but I'll mention it anyway. Uh, these are very different sort of algorithms behind the scenes. And it might uh, at glance seem that it's a, the same representation, but um, they're really, uh, there are times that they, they differ quite a lot. It does seem to be uh, following it. Well, here's an example. The vol index has stayed down in here while the TSI pushed higher. So, but you see when this happened and this happened, and then the ATR went, look at that. I mean, these are excellent signals to, uh, there's 46%. Now, in general, the way I recommend Again, not going all in on things. Let's say you had, let's say, let's say you had a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. Make the math easy to invest. And you like Phantom Coin. It is one of our Moonstream picks. It was our big winner last year. Uh, we re-recommended it this year. And at some point, we're going to be, you know, this is definitely one we're watching. So when um, this came on, the um, I totally forgot what I was saying. The uh, Phantom Coin. So this, uh, yeah, this entry here and then here and here would have been a good entry, right? So the allocations. So let's say you had $10,000 or $1,000. You could put 25% of it on the position when the TSI went red to green, and maybe another 25% when the vol index did that, and then another 25% when the entry thing, the ATR triggered. And then you might also want to hold some back. And these are just examples. But, uh, and I'll share in a moment the, the four I usually use and that we call the four horsemen. So the um, other one we like to watch is that signal line. And I'm sorry this is so confusing in here. We can't remove, once they're in here, they're in here for life apparently. You can't take old ones out. So you're looking at some uh, a skeleton graveyard of some of the older ones that uh, had to be sacrificed to get to the new ones here <laughs> so but here's that signal line i'll move this up so move this up with these arrows right so i'll turn this off for clarity and the signal line is a great confirming indicator as well so generally you want to see it on i'll cover some of these nuances later but in this case it sort of coincided red to green green circle there and so you know we had one and two and three the other indicator going a little bit out of order, but it's important that you understand what I'm, how I have my chart set up. And uh, by the way, in the, in the live classes tomorrow, I can share charts. So for example, if you want this chart, I can make it shareable and give it to you. And that way, if you have the trading view uh, subscription that allows for a number of these uh, and it, it, it'll load right up. So I'm not sure what happens if you're still in the free plan, but it should still work. Let me know if, you, if there's any, uh, if it doesn't. So the trend indicator is another one. Let's do that one next. The trend indicator is more for a longer term uh, change of direction, but the um, four horsemen here, move this up a bit. We haven't talked about it in a while because it's really best in bull markets or when the markets are turning. So I know it's a little hard to see all this. So let me do, let me do this. There, that should be better. All right, so what we're watching for on this, this is called the trend indicator. Put the labels on here for you guys. So up above ERI, TSI, signal lined and trend and the vol index. And so what we're looking for in the trend indicator here, it's kind of like, I joke that it's kind of like Mario Brothers and you expect to see Mario coming along, jumping along here, grabbing all the coins, right? Um, yeah, certainly. You know, tra trading, it's, it's money on the line, so I don't joke about these things, but it's uh, it's a one way to look at it. And so we've kind of gamified this, uh, we meaning Joe. Joe, this is one of Joe's originals. So we we're looking for the uh, the key first to signal that, hey, there may be a, an uptrend. So the bell is the buy signal. So the criteria are that this midline goes from green, sorry, from red to green. And the key, so right here, the bag of money is where you'd sell. So let me back up a bit. And these, ideally, they run in cycles, right? So you'll see here, the first green arrow, hey, that's in line with the key. We might see a trend reversal. It goes red to green. The key does not mean buy, though. It says, hey, it might be happening. Uh, our confirm, confirming indicator, or confirmation, rather, is the bell. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm going to zoom out. Let me just do this here. 
Okay, so we're looking right here, you guys. So the bell, this would have been a buy signal. And then the numbers are the sequence of uh, overzealous telemarketers. Uh, the key in the bell, the bell is the buy. And then the number sequence here is basically saying, all right, this is should last for, and typically it's like seven or eight uh, cycles, or I'm um, sorry, seven different steps. And so right in here, we have two sell alerts. There's multiple ways to take profits, and we'll talk more about that in Active Trader class. But this, um, if you're following this, which is usually pretty good, this would be sell part of the position on this dollar sign. And... Um, you know, it's a safety net in case it turns over. There are some instances where that makes sense. I usually hold to the seventh step, the bag of money. This is the take profit. And while I always recommend a, a moon bag, so let's say you sold 90% of this here, that would have been excellent timing because then what happened is we had a key saying, all right, do we, are we getting back in? But we did not get the bell. We sideways, sideways, went green to red, went drop down again. So that was a no trade. So you took profits at the top right there, nailed it, came back below. Then the key, hey, maybe we're going high, wait, but wait. And then sure enough, the bell said, buy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, take the money off the table, key, nope, it dropped down again, right? This is this is amazing. Then up here, key, and then this time we had three cycles in a row. The key, the bell is the buy, one, two, three, four, take profit here. Missed a little bit on this one, you know, you might have stayed in. But that's why if you're leaving some money in the trade, especially especially in bull trends, we'll, we'll say, you know, when when we when 2024 comes around or when we get this short term bounce in 2023, we'll be riding these out because it's kind of like unleashing the unleashing the hounds. Sellers are the sellers are exhausted. It's a buyer's turn. And then so sure enough, another key, another bell in this case went sideways, sideways, sideways. Boom, shot up here, take profits. And then it went down and down again. Now, this is a uh, four-hour chart, I believe. This works great on the uh, daily and weekly. Point being, again, alignment. So we've simplified this as much as possible so that you don't have to be a, a Fibonacci master and uh, learn how to do Elliott waves and all that stuff. And there's there's validity to it. I just, I just don't want to go to all that complexity. All right, where did the uh, question box go? Let me see if you guys have anything. And then we're almost done. And Some of the crypto mastery attendees are wondering how to get onto your active trader class because I think I didn't know if that's some that something that's just in the M3 bundle is that correct? Um, yeah, and so um, most of the people here I imagine are from the promotion we just did. M M3 is active trader and the Moonstream. I get the three months of Moonstream, the newsletter and everything else, and the Facebook group. I think the Facebook group will you have unlimited access to for the duration of M3 and uh, the uh, indicators. And so if you have any that are just in crypto mastery, uh, certainly we can uh, upgrade them. Some of the active traders have messaged us privately to upgrade and uh, Myrene is handling that. So certainly we want to give you all the tools and, uh, and can do that. So uh, thanks for letting me know. And um, yeah, so sure. Rachel had a question, and so I've contacted Myrene to kind of get with you and figure out if there's a way to circle back to Rachel and just ask her, you know, if she wants to join on that class. And okay, so sure. Yeah, um, so Rachel, if you'd like more information on that, uh, certainly reach out. The um, The website for M3 has, has been, we turned it off because we had a deadline of Sunday night. Uh, we might be reopening that, but certainly connect with us. And it's uh, I do a class like this every week. It's a little bit more, a little bit more advanced. We we look at um, uh, you know, we look at more markets, more coins, and uh, things like total market cap, and so that there's something for everybody. But um, you know, we'd be happy to have you. And and uh, if you'd like more information on that, just let us know, and probably get you a guest pass, maybe even for tomorrow. So just reach out for that. We've never done that before, but um, since you're here. Uh, I think that would be fair. It makes sense. And um, so, you know, and we're really trying to, you know, we're, we're growing both communities here and also an active trader because the more of us, the more things we see. Sometimes somebody sees a news article or a pattern setting up and says, hey, how about this? That's really the goal for this year where we're all, it's like, you know, two heads are better than one, 30, 40, 50 uh, people and eyes uh, and similarly trained to look for similar things, I think is, um, it's going to be great for all of us. So, because mark my words, I mean, we will bottom. It's it's it may be a painful 
long-term recovery, but there certainly will. And as Susie said, these swing trades in the middle of that, the markets, uh, you know, they ebb and flow. So um, back to this. So does everyone get that? Let me turn off the ATR for now, although it does look very strong here as a confirming indicator. And this is the four hour. But the things we look for are the ERI, TSI. And right back here is a good uh, representation. Uh, except that we didn't get the ERI, but um, you, you won't always. There's some nuances to this. I think that the, yeah, um, the, this is a little bit of a sloppy one. It's not textbook, but um, the ERI, this green line here technically was a trigger confirmed by this and this and this. So this is an example where you might get in early here, hence the name early reversal indicator and allocate some capital, have a stop loss. So this would have not stopped out. So the other tool that we sometimes use is the, uh, I have to get out of full screen, but the trade tool where it says, get in here, set your stop. So confirming a more, putting more capital in as this signals, then a little more as the red goes to green, and then more as the key goes to a belt. Now, most people don't have time to be watching it that often, but this is, uh, you know, on a daily basis, you can always do it in the evening or just put it in here, go all in, have your stop loss there and have more confidence as these things start to all trigger. And then you're like, all right, this looks good because, I mean, this would have been, you know, obviously in retrospect, hindsight, all of that easy to do. But this is this the alignment we're looking for and to ride it all the way up and then get out when we have the opposite. So I think that's that's the best I can explain it. And um, the only other indicator I think we haven't looked at yet here. And Susie, if you have anything to add, please do. Um, I'm gonna pull up the radar. I just wanted to kind of get through that before we're coming up on two hours. So I wanna kind of wrap this up for everyone. So, okay. I mean, I think you did a great job on the earlier hour there. Let's, uh, so the radar is is basically a way to watch all this to, uh, and, and by the way, um, let me finish that thought. The radar is a way to monitor multiple time frames with one easy indicator if you're in maintenance mode. And one of the ways that uh, we'll also be watching for the bottom and the tops is the uh, radar here. So I have the default is set to four hours. I'm sorry, one hour. Is that the default? One hour, four hour daily, weekly. Um, I'm going to modify this. I think my settings got uh, buggered there because oh, why can't I edit this? Okay, yeah, so, so I always go to, you got it? Um, go to the left hand side where the, the title of the radar should be. You got it. Yeah, no, I see. So I'll show her then that also. What I'm doing is is updating my time frames, and I prefer, especially for catching a macro top or bottom, the four hour daily, weekly, monthly. And the four hour is almost irrelevant. I can always turn it off, but um, you know, or yeah. But since there's four there, that's how you modify it. So now it's the four hour daily, weekly, monthly. Four hours is actually good. So when these are all green, that's a huge indication that, yeah, especially if we're confirming. Now, the stars don't always align, but if they do, uh, it's game on. And so, um, but when these start going bullish, so right now we're bullish on the daily, weekly. That I think encompasses this little bounce, but not on the monthly. We did not look good on a monthly. And uh, that's something we def we spend time on tomorrow. We do every week. So this is the uh, last three market cycles. And I'll just move this out of the way here. Actually, let me turn that off. Finish this point. Yikes. Uh, my object tree. Where is this here? Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, there. The um, We're not, not bullish on the monthly. And the biggest thing that concerns me here, which we'll talk about tomorrow, is this big big bearish engulfing candle right here actually i already have this ready let me show it to you this way the engulfing candles see see that um not to get ahead of ourselves but bullish engulfing big green body engulfs the red one 
bullish and go green. Green goes up, green up. Another one here, up. Another one here, up, 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 up here. Similarly up here. So, but also red down a lot. And then we have this last month, big bearish engulfing candle. We're not done yet, folks. Uh, you know, I think we're going to come down in this range. But, but even visually, you could show this to a, probably a, a toddler and say, "Where do you think? What do you think is what happens here? If you zoom out, these little wavy lines, they might just put their finger in the paint and go, oh, I don't know, maybe this. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, and and this won't be a straight drop, but um, oops, on a monthly basis. Uh, reserve, the, reserve the right to be wrong, but this would represent an, a great buying opportunity. And especially now, I'm not said I'm, but be careful of confirmation biases, as we all should, not falling in love with this idea. If I'll throw all this out the window, if the indicators start telling me differently, and that's monitoring and watching those foot, footsteps of elephants. So this is um, really what we get into uh, tomorrow, Rachel, more of this uh, kind of thing. And uh, we, you know, here are the levels where I think things will go. We map that out there. And we're watching this. It is interesting that it's holding here. This is the only bullish thing I see right now is that we're sitting right at the 100-month the, um, moving average. And not sure. Or well, here's you can also do it. EMA hit the gear. 100 month moving average. See that? So interesting. But it, that's why it's holding here. I think that's why it's holding here. But it's not going to be enough. So the midpoint of that candlestick there. But anyway, getting a little bit deeper than I wanted to. Any questions, you guys? I think that's um. Great session, Cornelia. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, let's wrap this thing up. We'll, we'll dive into it deeper tomorrow. Uh, as you can see, I kind of have fun playing around with these things. Uh, we'll talk about the um, correction ranges. If we do go 85%, that takes us to 10K like every other market cycle. And why should this one be any less when we have this monster recession and looming war? So that's why this range here is likely. And uh, I've been put, put watching that for months. And then uh, projected bull run, though, on a positive note, once we do start to bottom, this is just a chart overlay of the prior 2018 movements. Apparently, I can't move it once I put it on there. But right in here, this here, these same bars. So that's why we're, we're in a bottoming pattern, probably push up, come down again, and then go higher, and then get out to that $175,000, $175,000 Bitcoin and, uh, you know, in June. You know, see the peak around June 20, uh, 2025. 20, maybe I had too much coffee, guys. June of 2025. Just trying to finish off here. So that's what we're watching. We'll go into this more tomorrow. Um, I don't want to keep people longer. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. And certainly uh, do join class tomorrow. Ask questions and come here every Tuesday. And uh, Joe and Susie are the best at uh, sort of going through these different indicators and uh, all of that. So... Um, yeah, great stuff. So, uh, and then that was, I should have left that on there. You can connect your paper trading accounts there. So this box here, if you see this, this is where you can do paper trading, which I highly recommend. And, uh, and, uh, that way you could start doing trades and without risking real money, great time to be practicing, right? So, uh, we, it may be a month or two or three. Or four, I think we could. I think the rest of this month is going to be a little bit nasty on the way down. But um, once we start bottoming, it's a good time to practice with trading trading accounts. They can practice shorting. I love shorting the market right now in my paper trader. Oh yeah, cool. Um, you good? Yeah, it's just it's great. It's a great practice, even though you know you can't do it as an American, but you could still use the indicators and. Yeah, I I mean to, for keeping the keep sharpening the saw. This is a four hour here. Little, this is what I posted earlier. Um, you know we're seeing a bit of a relief rally. It came right down to this uh, golden Fibonacci golden pocket there, bounced. So it's it'll come up and, it, and then we're gonna come back down again. But you know to come in here and practice shorting, we don't teach shorting and um, I don't recommend margin shorting because on a short term basis there's a lot of fluctuations. Uh, where the algos will go and liquidate. That's what happened up in here. Uh, and then they bring it back down again. So, but if you're shorting, even the paper trading, it's at least you're biding your time and you're 
watching and learning the nuances of price action, how it goes up and down. So that's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll uh, show people in Active Trader how to do that. So we haven't uh, gone into that. We, we had a class called Sniper Trader where we were doing that on uh, with margin trading, but it just became too risky last year, and it was uh, a beta program that we canceled. So I think it's about getting the rhythm of the market, and once they can feel the rhythm, it's almost like music. You're gonna play the music, you're gonna read the music, you're gonna feel it. Why am I hearing Gloria Stefan in my head while you're saying that? <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> I'm an '80s, no, I'm a '70s baby, but '80s was definitely in my time. That's why. <laughs> in the rhythm of the night. All right. On that note, guys, thanks, everyone. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, certainly uh, feel free to chat in the chat group with any questions. And thanks, Susie. Uh, Susie, if you're free, I'll chat with you. Uh, maybe we could hop on for five minutes whenever you're free. Okay. And happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Happy holidays. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week.